I am Peter Haddock and I'm here for a very special event at the Operator Skills Hub with Flannery and Ben Hammond, Sustainability Manager. Ben, this machine that's moving behind us is in the mix, folks. And that mix is hydrogen and diesel. Never seen anything like this before, Ben. The machine's been made specifically to have both fuels. Now, we talk a lot about sustainability and things like that. And people are saying it's never going to work. Well, hold on. If you can mix it's it up, working. it's going to be working, isn't it? And just it's, it's working, working right behind absolutely. us. Why the mix? What have you done? And how is it all working? Yeah, absolutely. So the 320 that we do have behind us didn't roll off the uh, didn't roll off the showroom as this. It is retrofitted. We've worked over the last 12 months to deliver what we have here today. The machine is currently running at 40% hydrogen and 60% right. HVO, yep. and it delivers exactly that when it comes to reduced carbon emissions. 40% less emissions. So the hydrogen element, obviously we see the tanks behind us. Diesel you just fill up normally. Mm -hmm. How are you actually putting the hydrogen in there? So you, have you got a hydrogen container with us here today? Yeah, absolutely. So we have some hydrogen with us to fill the tanks. Although the tanks on the back of the machine are designed specifically for a 10 hour productive working shift right. based on the stats of a Cat 320 at full capacity, at full productivity. This is what I was going to ask you, because productivity is really important. You can fill up different um, a diesel quite easily. Now you can fill up the hydrogen. Now you can mix it up. But also, you said you're, you're changing the mix in some cons uh, senses. How is that working out? Absolutely. So currently running at 40% hydrogen and 60% HVO. Yeah. Depending on the application and the task at hand, we can actually flip that. This could be running at 60% hydrogen and 40% diesel, right. depending on the workload at hand. And to have the adaptability for it to change itself, that's going to be the next, uh, the, the next big innovation with, with this fuel blend. At the moment, folks, the operator inside the cab here can literally switch from diesel to hydrogen, can't they? He can, absolutely. So what he's actually doing currently now is he's coming forward in dual fuel mode. So he's activated the hydrogen, coming forward, conducting a few cycles, going back, changing to diesel, and then doing the exact same application again. And then we've got the tech team that are analyzing all of the data that's coming out of the machines, and it's proving the exact same productivity. So the questions everybody's going to ask, and I know you are, folks, is, is it the same? And so the tech doesn't lie. You've got the guys monitoring it. And we're going to get those figures for us, folks, to make sure that we understand how that's operating. So we've now got a big hydrogen moment from Flannery, but a big machine and actually working. Your engineers are in, in that mix. Uh, tell me a little bit about the skill sets that you've brought in. We're extremely proud to work with Yelemco. The intelligence that them guys have when it comes to this, this is their bag. They've done this on piling rings in the past. They've done this on motor vehicles in the past. But this is the first of its kind in the UK on an excavator. So we're really proud to be working with them. And it's taken around about 12, 13 months. Yep. A lot of government funding has been involved to, uh, to, to have what we have here today. So, folks, first for Flannery, first for the UK, first for a Cat 320. Yep. That looks a little bit different, folks. But again, you've got a big cat fleet, so you're, you're used to looking after these machines yourself in the service departments behind us. So next steps are big event here with lots of people looking at the, the machine. But where is it going next? And, and, you know, obviously you've got a lot of really prestigious sites. And how are you taking it forward? Absolutely. So what it's actually doing here today is the final trials before it goes on to projects. We work a lot with our clients on their sustainability demands. Yep. And we've worked with the specific clients that this is going to over numerous years to get them in a position to be able to introduce hydrogen on a working construction site today. So we have two sites, two machines that have been done. We have two sites with two separate clients that these are getting introduced to. Hopefully at the back end of this month, albeit these trials go well and the data shows what we need to show, few changes need to happen around the boxing rings and so on and so forth because obviously the the position where the tanks are yep, but yep. other than that these are ready to go and we have clients that have the infrastructure in place on their jobs to get these working and that's what i was going to ask folks it is all about infrastructure we talk about electrification we're now talking about hydrogen we're now talking about big cycle times mixing everything together the infrastructure we all know is important so it's only going to be relevant to the people that can get that into place but when that's in place on a job site, 
we now know that we can go mixing it up with hydrogen and make that step change with diesel and hydrogen that takes us into that space for the future when we could potentially have this machine on full hydrogen. So the equipment that we have here, this is just supporting all the data that we're pulling from the machine. Right. This, this equipment won't go with the machine. The tanks themselves are specific to this CAT320. Yeah. So they've analyzed the data of productive working hours on a CAT320, and then they've put the tanks to suit. So them specific tanks on this 320 will be good for 10 hours of productive working. So the one thing, the final thing is, Ben, everyone's gonna ask me this question. What happens if something goes wrong? There's an accident on site. What about the health and safety features of having hydrogen tanks on a machine? Obviously, we've got these protected here as well, which is your storage to fill up. How does that work? Absolutely. There is a false illusion around hydrogen. Yep. I think certain films that came out in the 90s, Ooh, yes, yep. absolutely. <laughs> the reality is, if these tanks were to be struck, be it an ADT reverse into them or a machine swing around and hit them, if they were to be struck, it would simply be like putting a dart in an aerosol can. It'll give you a big fizz and then that will be the end of it. It will not combust. Same with the fuel. The same way that we treat fuel on site already. We have specific areas that are coned off or sectioned off or in containers, whatever it may be. There's not too much difference that we have to do to, uh, to facilitate these. So it's all fine, folks. Don't worry. We're not going to have an explosive moment on site. We're just going to have a much more explosive moment for carbon and reduction and the future of alternative fuels. Absolutely. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Peter. It's been a pleasure as always.